Here is a sample of the wastewater treatment sludge we received for this trial. The sample is dry, hard and brittle. Now, a sample like this is quite easy to feed into the tube of the paralysis kiln when the particle size is small enough. You can see in the sample that there are some larger particles in the feedstock. So we had to manually break these down in order to get a more consistent feed. Now in a commercial scale system, this would be less of an issue because you're working with a much larger screw. Overall, the feedstock we had to work with in this trial ranged from hard, dry material with low moisture content to high moisture content, sticky material. In preparation for the trial, we calibrate the feed screw using a sample of the received sludge. What we found in this case was that the sludge supplied varied a lot in its moisture content. So our initial calibration was not reliable across the duration of the trial. Although it's all the same wastewater treatment sludge, this lack of homogeneity in the moisture content meant we had to adjust the feed rate for each run, which led to some differences in feed rates across the trial. It's worth noting that in a commercial scale setup, these kinds of differences in homogeneity could present themselves in differences in predicted output versus actual output, which could be significant depending on the operational period involved. So, ideally the feed material is as homogeneous as possible so that the feed rate is reliable and predictable. On the left of this split screen we have process temperatures from various points inside the paralysis system. On the right we're looking down into the feed upper where the sludge has been loaded so that it can be fed into the tube of the paralysis kiln. On the bottom left of the screen you have the key process temperature. This is measured from inside the tube and gives us the most accurate reading of temperature from the process. We can also read our off-gas temperature which is measured in the system's afterburner. This is where we flare the same gas that has been extracted from this feedstock. We also have a number of probes inside the combustion chamber of the kiln and inside the discharge chamber helping us to monitor the process. Temperature is one of the variables that can have a big effect on the outcome of the process. The time it takes for the material to transfer from the feed end to the discharge end of the kiln is called residence time. The residence time determines the amount of time the material is, ex is exposed to heat while inside the tube. Uh, this is another one of the variables that influences the characteristics of the output material. Here we're visually inspecting a biochar sample that has been collected and cooled. We set up the trial schedule to allow us to test a number of parameters. This means we collect numerous samples of biochar during the trial runs. In this way we're able to compare the effects of changing process variables like temperature, residence time, bed depth, etc. On visual inspection here we have a biochar as identified by this dark carbon colour. It's relatively brittle as we can see here. We also have an orange colored residue that appeared in almost all of the samples. Now, the nature of this orange residue can be identified with some further analysis of the biochar. So why would you want to create biochar from wastewater treatment sludge? Use cases for biochar are growing and demand for biochar is growing. Biochar is being used as a soil amendment for carbon sequestration, in water filtration, as a livestock feed additive, and in energy production, just to name a few examples. By creating biochar from wastewater treatment sludge, we are effectively turning a waste product into a new resource. And the next step in this process for determining a use for biochar derived from the sludge is to have the biochar tested. Once the biochar is tested, the results will confirm its suitability for the market. Typically, biochar ranges from a few hundred euros to thousands of euros per tonne. On the higher end, depending on the particular biochar characteristics, the use case and supply and demand in the market.